Um, NIL have just uh, started selling cars in Norway. So they're, mm-hmm. they're breaking out of the Chinese market and, and establishing a foothold. Norway, of course, being the the strongest adopter of uh, electric vehicles in Europe. Uh, my sister lives over there and she drives a, a Model X. And um, going to visit her, I always say it feels like traveling five years into the future. <laughs> five, five years into an idealized future because they just... They've done so many things right in Norway. It's incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, nice. It's it's a great feeling country. But there are electric vehicles absolutely everywhere, and the infrastructure has grown up with them. Um, so it's 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 really impressive. And there, the variety of vehicles, I don't. I think it's probably unmatched anywhere in the world because you've got the U.S. automakers sending their EVs over. You've got the legacy automakers having great success. Like even back when the likes of the e-Golf were, were like from um, VW was expensive and um, not terribly impressive in terms of range and everything. There were a lot of them on the road over there. Mm-hmm. So you had this incredible melange of automakers from all over the world uh, selling into Norway. So you will see vehicles that you had never heard of, let alone seen before when you're over there. Um, and in, that includes a lot of Chinese brands. Um, and there it will trickle down to the rest of Europe. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Because cool. what more harsh uh, environment is there in Europe than Norway, where it's you know 30 degrees below zero in winter yeah. and 30 <laughs> degrees above zero in summer? Yeah. It's, uh, it's quite a variable climate. Sounds like Croatia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> almost, almost. Okay. Oh, okay, <laughs> I will say I, have, I haven't tested Croatia different times of the years. So the know. winters are not that hard, but there were minus 20 exceptions, you know, where, mm-hmm. where it was like really, really cold. Um, tell me, are there, are there any specific neo models that would kind of come first to the European market or something yeah, that kind of e, caught your eye? Uh, ES8 is like a, an SUV sized vehicle. I believe that's the one that they're launching in Norway now. Mm-hmm. Um, and it would be comparable to, I suppose, the Audi e-tron in terms of size and uh, accommodation. It's a, it's a quite a, a muscular looking beefy vehicle with, um, I think, seven seats, uh, a fold down back row, uh, cool. which would be, I suppose, for kids. And then they are looking at bringing out the ET7 uh, close on the heels of that in Norway. And that is more like a Model S shape or Model 3 shape of car, mm-hmm. um, more of a family uh, sedan type vehicle. So that's what they're leading with. Um, Xiaopeng or Xpeng have also been selling in Norway for a little while, uh, and they have a sort of a, a similar set of vehicles. Um, and it's actually interesting to, to see while... The stereotype for Chinese products has been for a while that, you know, they just copy what the West are doing, like literal copy and paste of the designs and everything. Um, I think in a sense that those sort of practices were literally practicing, um, getting the concepts in mind and getting the manufacturing abilities up and running. And now there's an emerging confidence that you can see in the, in the motor shows over there where they're fielding their own design language and and it doesn't feel like a, a an attempt to to imitate what has come out of the West. Mm-hmm. It feels like a very confident stride into the market with with quality design and quality build uh, on these vehicles. So it it I think the impression still exists that there's a, a quality shortfall um, in Chinese design and manufacture. But from what I'm seeing now, that's going to be upended pretty quickly because mm-hmm. these these vehicles speak for themselves. Um, and the one thing I, I am noticing is that they have a kind of a Chinese identity to them as well. There's there's a particular design language. Um, most of the vehicles, particularly the sedans, because a lot of these companies, Xiaopeng, uh, uh, Bike or BAIC, um, and... Uh, the, the BYD sort of uh, uh, upper end of their range, and of course the Neo ET7, they all had this kind of rounded pointed front end, 
uh, with very narrow headlights. And it's it's sort of a Chinese identity, I think, for these vehicles. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing that they're all converging on the same sort of look. Uh, it might be that if they can flip that perception of Chinese quality and, and, and say, like, these are actually really high quality vehicles in a few years time, it might be that that's a mark of, um, or, or like a status symbol to have this particular Chinese look to your car. Yeah. Um, but you never know. I, I think it's good. Um, mm -hmm. Why not brand like a origin of a car? Sounds like yeah. a great idea. Um, I've seen some models where between the lights, there's also like a huge strip between them. It looks mm -hmm. like a large light strip. Um, yeah. Are they going into the direction of uh, installing cameras there? So it's also like self-driving cars, what other EV companies are doing, or Absolutely. is it just like a cosmetics thing? Uh, so it's a little from column A, a little from column B. Of course, the upper end, they're trying to compete with, with the, the likes of Tesla and, um, and all of the other um, above 50,000 euro sort of uh, electric vehicles that have all of these self-navigation systems. So uh, they're trying and they're succeeding. A lot of, a lot of these uh, navigation systems have a lot of history behind them at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, like BYD, for example, their fleet of, um, of vehicles, not only the consumer stuff, but also the, the commercial vehicles, they're all contributing to the cloud learning um, of their navigation system. So they have, I think it was like over 2 billion uh, kilometers driven uh, in autonomous mode on their vehicles. Nice. So it's really quite comparable to what Tesla are doing. Yeah. But it's more of this kind of alternate universe feel to it because it's like, mm -hmm. I didn't know any of this was happening yeah, before I did yeah. this research. Um, and so, so they're, they're prepared. Um, Obviously, all of those systems will need to become acquainted with the diversity of um, legislation and stuff in different European and American territories. Mm -hmm. uh, so there'll be a, a lag time, just as there is in getting Tesla's autopilot working over here. Uh, all of that needs to sort of retrain itself for European rules and so on. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see the full version, go to the Uncle Gold Podcast YouTube channel or watch the next clip.